I'm joined now by our senior political analyst, Marwan Bushara. So, Marwan, let's start with this message from Trump um, to the Saudis, basically saying, if you want our continued support against ISIS, you're going to have to, to pay up. Is that, to some degree, a demeaning message? Well, it's certainly not conventional in international relations for a country, especially like the United States, to function like a mercenary. If you pay, then we will put our soldiers like a private contractors at your service in Syria or, 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 or any elsewhere. It's really problematic for the, the world superpower, the one that is responsible for the new world order since Second World War, the one that has actually managed to be the custodian of that order for seven decades. Now to be uh, moving into these uh, pity transactional modes whereby if you are oil rich, then we will be at your service, we will put our soldiers uh, uh, at your service and the service of your whims, whether it's in Syria, in Yemen, where it is problematic in every possible way. Uh, Marwan, we also held um, Alan Fisher mentioned there that the Gulf American summit uh, looks like it's going to be postponed. How is that significant? Well, look, I mean, there's a good number of reasons. I tend to be suspicious about these things. I will not take anything face value, especially statements coming from officials. I think, on the one hand, the United States, while it does want Gulf unity under America's umbrella, I think President Trump is having a good time exploiting this crisis. Certainly, he's milking the various Gulf countries in a major way. I mean, it was embarrassing already, even for the Crown Prince, the way he put that sign saying, oh, we're selling you this much hundreds of millions, this much billions of dollars in arms, while they were meeting in the White House. Later on, for every possible service, he would ask for money in return. And he's done that with the United Arab Emirates, with Qatar, with Saudi Arabia, with Kuwait, and so on and so forth. I think he's not unhappy with that. That's one. Two, clearly, in terms of Qatar, I mean, they have already, and we've heard that from the various contacts, they have already implemented everything that the Americans demanded of them in terms of financing terror, in terms of coordinating on a strategic level, and so on and so forth. I think the United Arab Emirates does not want a deal with Qatar at this point in time. And I think Saudi Arabia is not that enthusiastic for a deal. Why? For the simple reason, and I've always argued that for almost a year now, it's very hard to climb down a palm tree. Can we expand on that? Well, Metaphor you know, a little? They say it's very, hard not, it's very hard to climb down a tree once you made a big mistake. I think the Emiratis and the Saudis made the mistake of hacking the Qatari news service and launching a kind of psychological uh, warfare against Qatar, and they almost wanted to invade Qatar according to various intelligence reports. And then it all backfired. And then it was always, always clear for everyone, including to Trump, who in the beginning supported the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia, that this was, was all wrong and that Qatar does combat terror and it does have a major American base and that it is an ally of the United States and so on and so forth. So the Saudis and the Emiratis need to climb down the tree because they made a big mess of it and now it's been almost a year. But in the Gulf, it's not just any tree. It's a palm tree. <laughs> It's very difficult to climb down a palm tree. So, Marwan, if Trump is moving the US and its support away from a serving the world model to a pay for our support model, what does that tell us about their worldview more generally? It's very simplistic and it's very transactional. He's trying to imitate what Barack Obama did, but in a completely wrong way. Barack Obama said, look, we cannot be the custodians of the world alone. Yes, we were the initiator, the creator, and the guardians of this uh, world order for several decades. But now, Europe has resurrected, and China is out there, and, and Russia is returning, and this, of course, uh, you know, uh, the rest of the world, like India and others, and everyone wants to play a role. So the United States needs to share the leadership as well as the responsibilities you know, and the pay for whatever the world needs to do. So he wanted to be a multilateral world order. Yes, perhaps led by the United States, but along with other countries. President Trump comes in with a totally more simplistic, naive way of saying, 
forget about the world order. We don't care about the world order. We're losing in this world order. The trade is working against us and security is working against us. NATO is not serving us, we're serving it. And NATO members are not paying their bit and the Gulf countries are not paying their share and so on and so forth. So from now on, guys, if you want us to help in anything, if you want to trade with us, if you want our security, you're going to have to pay up. Well, the problem with that is that Russia will make the same offer to its clients. France will make the same offer. China definitely will be making the same offer. And hence, we will have an entire world like a, like a, like a Tower of Babel, whereby everyone is, is financing and arming everyone else. And it's going to be a big, chaotic mess. Marwan Bashar. Marwan, thank you. Thank you.